price of freedom is death. We are coming to get our check. Black first, my brothers and my sisters, welcome to the Afro Elite YouTube channel. I'm your host, Afro Elite. Today we have a very special collab for you all today because this is a subject that's been brewing, especially on the far right side. So make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe button, and share button so more people can get this information because we have with us returning guests. Our good brother, Black Logic, is in the building as we break down DEI, what it is, and how it is being used against Black people. Black Logic, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful, brother. Thanks for having me again. I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad we were able to finally get together again so we can discuss these topics and things like that, because a lot of people might not understand the severity of what is really going on with the attack of DEI. And I definitely wanted to do this collab with you again, because we did a similar one, which I will put in the description below. If you guys haven't seen it, we did a similar one on affirmative action which is really like a sibling to DEI. Absolutely. So before we get started, is there, um, what have you been hearing about DEI? I mean, I guess when you look at DEI, it gives kind of the appearance of inclusivity, but the, the data, the details, when you look up um, certain charging reports, it states that Black Americans are still vastly underrepresented in leadership positions mm -hmm. throughout America and all the Fortune 500 companies or the large companies itself. So um, this is looking at it from a business standpoint. We're still far behind in DEI. And I know we're going to get there a little bit later. DEI never assisted or supported or benefit Black folk in any way or kind, um, maybe on a very micro, very minute, very... It helped one or two black people, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to be said about it. Yes, yes. Let's start off, if you guys don't know, let's start off with the actual definition of DEI, and then we can go into it. So this is the definition of DEI. It's DEI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. All right? It's an umbrella term for programs, policies, and strategies and uh, practices that implement a company's mission to create and sustain a diverse, equitable, and inclusive environment that respects and accommodates every employee's ethnicity and sexual orientation. So off face value, to be very honest with you, DEI is not like um, a negative principle. Right. Uh, off, off of that, off of that value is is not a negative principle, and the thing is, is that what I find very interesting. We're going to look at this also as well too. One of the key details you saw in the definition was the fact that it did not say specifically black. It said ethnic identity. Black people are not the only ethnic identity in this country, and sexual orientation or gender identity, which includes white folks absolutely i want to show briefly another definition on cnn cnn had this definition cnn had this definition it says what is dei cnn interviewed seven dei experts and industry leaders and asked each to define diversity equity and inclusion although their response varied slightly most had shared vision most had a shared vision for what constitutes DEI. Diversity is embracing the differences among uh, everyone brings to the table, whether it's someone's race, age, ethnicity, religion, gender, sexual orientation, physical ability, or other aspect of social identity. So let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. The key definition, when they say diversity, equity, and inclusion, diversity, when they say race, they say race, which black people are not the only different race, race, Correct. age, ethnicity, religion, gender, and sexual orientation, and physical ability, that means people who are disabled. So they're you talking know. about everybody. Yeah. 
which to be very clear with you and i'm sure you can agree with this and you can speak on this besides race white people can easily fit into really all of these other categories absolutely so really their issue is with black people because when you hear it you hear the particular issue and they frame it in a sense of this is giving black people an unfair unfair advantage over white folks the same way they did with affirmative action exactly exactly which affirmative action to get to the definition of affirmative action affirmative action was not exclusively to black people absolutely not it never and that it, it actually never stated black folk yeah why don't you why don't you um get tell the audience really about affirmative action can you pop that definition up for me yes yeah all right here we go right here so affirmative action this is uh the britannica you guys see in the united states an effective effort to improve employment or educational opportunity for members of minority groups and for women. Mm. So basically that's stating that it's for Asians, Hispanics, uh, Native Americans, uh, Pacific Islanders, and white women. So it's pretty much going to benefit everybody, supposedly on paper, except for white men. But even with affirmative action, we've seen other groups come over here, either legal or illegal, and get jobs and contracts over foundational black Americans. So we understand that affirmative action or neither DEI has truly helped us, even when you look at you know the reports and the percentages. Yes. And what's interesting is they say and women. And uh, women. So you all know when they speak about women and they just say women by de by default, they mean white women. Absolutely. Who, who statistically benefit more than any other demographic of people in with affirmative action and it's always been used as a weapon against the qualifications and the merit of black people in school and work in any form any program or anything it's always been used as well the black people are only here because of affirmative action and now they have because the supreme court has essentially stripped affirmative action or the obligation of affirmative action so now they turned affirmative action into dei the same energy they use with affirmative action they just converted that into dei you know, it's funny you should say that. I saw a TikTok video where a black guy was talking about, um, you know, reparations. He he was he making comments about how the government owes on um, black Americans, and then the video cut, and then a white guy jumped in and said, "You know, what else do you want? You had affirmative action, and now you got DEI." And it was weird because once again, they believe that these legislations, these terms were actually targeted towards black folk. No, we're the ones who got these terms to be put up and to help other groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we definitely push affirmative action. We definitely somehow push DEI, but none of this benefited black folk at the same level and same rate as the other groups. It just hasn't. Mm -hmm. Did you and know that Indian Indian Americans are the richest group of Americans next to Jewish, um, Jewish folks? Mm okay uh i didn't know that statistic yeah because when you look at the um you know asian demographics you have all these you know asian uh different subsets chinese korean Vietnamese, etc and then indian folk and out of them indian folk are the the richest people how how do they get all the tech jobs how do they get all the call center jobs right they got the some of the low-end skill jobs as well as the high-end skill when it comes to computer programming and things of that nature it was through the same programs our ancestors and our mothers and fathers fought for, whether it be affirmative action or DEI. Hmm. That's true. That's that that's a good point you bring up. The fact that DEI, that and we can we can put this down and as we chop it up, DEI really 
all of these programs, every other group of people who benefit from it really need to be thanking FBA for all of that stuff. Because before America had it to where they could just openly discriminate against any non-white ethnic group, and right. all of these other ethnic groups were kind of like, well, stand in their lane. And mind, they're like, well, this is just the way the world works, and I'm just going to stay in my lane. It was really through FBAs and our fight um, for some type of equity in society that led to the programs like affirmative action and or policies like affirmative action and all of these things being created in the first place that all of these other people benefit from because prior to that america was able to really openly just just openly discriminate against any non-white people it wasn't until black people started fighting and saying okay your company is 99 percent white because you guys are discriminating against every qualified black person you say you need to be qualified they go to school college get a degree get the certificate but you don't hire them so mm. that's because you have um uh, anti-black policy even if even donald trump donald trump didn't want people in his um uh, hotels absolutely not so these are the steps that we were able to look at and say okay this is anti-blackness you guys are claiming that you can't have policies based off of race but you guys do have policies based off of race so through the and we're being very um brief with the details we're just giving you an overall summary of the history but through that that's where the policies of okay well we can't openly discriminate against non-white people came from that's that's Correct. where that came from now that's a good point there's something i, I want to point out here you can just pop that up for me okay is that you said something very prominent and very powerful how we can't just openly discriminate against black folks so we need some laws we need some policies we need some regulations in order um to curtail or to change the narrative of us being racist Mm -hmm. So this is something I did not know exists until I went through it. So I had to pop this up uh, working for corporate America. The three most popular interventions make firms less diverse, not more, because managers resist strong arming. For instance, testing job applicants hurts women and minorities, but not because they perform poorly. Mm -hmm. They don't perform poorly. It's not because of that. Hiring managers don't always test everyone. White men often get a pass and don't um, interpret results consistently. So they don't even have statistics for white men. They're not even taking these job tests. There's some of these, like they may do a personality test or may do a knowledge test. I've went through some of these tests where they're tests to see if you are, um, if you have the knowledge base to be, a, you know, a, what, to be beneficial for the business, to, to make sure you're qualified for that position. And as you can tell here, when it came to job tests, black men score lower than e everybody else. Mm. Right. But again, it stated that they it's not that they perform poorly and compared to white men, they're not even being tested. Then another key point is that black men were being tested more than everybody else as well as black women. If you look at it, we were being tested more so than um, every other group with the exception, I think, with uh, Asian women. But mm. it's crazy. That is. And it also goes to show the micromanaging of black people. Something that all is brought up often is there's th there's such a stigma against black people that anytime you see a anytime you know the s usual suspects they see a black person it's well you only got in because of dei and you only got in because of dei but the truth of the matter is and i'm so glad that you brought that statistic up brother is the truth of the matter is the fact that when black people are in these positions nine times out of ten they are way more qualified than all of their non-black counterparts. Right. They have to over-excel 
in their work performance and their qualifications and all of the things that their non-black counterparts have to. And I'm so very glad that you brought this the that statistic up because I don't think a lot of people think of it that way. You don't even know how much better they're doing in comparison to white men because white men are not being tested. White men Absolutely. are just getting their position assigned to them. And they, well, well we're just going to leave them alone. But everybody else gets um, checked under this microphone, this um, magnifying glass. Everybody gets Correct. looked at with this magnifying glass and everybody else gets micromanaged, especially black folk. Everybody else gets micromanaged, but white people don't at all. So for them to just assume that, well, if you're white, you of course you worked hard and are qualified for the job. You don't actually know how poor they are at these jobs because they're not being checked. I think something else um, with the statistics that I found is that black men were being tested more than everyone else, more than black women, more than Asians, more than Hispanics, of course, um, more than whites. And what's significant about that is if I, if I test 50 black men mm -hmm. and I only test 10 white men and out of that 50, 35 didn't perform well, out of this 10, only one didn't perform well, who percentage is gonna be higher given the take of how many people they test a sample group versus a mm -hmm. smallest group, there's no correlation there. Yeah. So e even the, the numbers that they're stating that black men were just simply tested more. So of course we have a larger sample size. So the more we do good, the more we do bad is in our favor. But of course they take the worst of it compared to a smaller sample group. We look like we're basically dumber than everybody else. Yeah, and I'm telling you, this this is kind of reminds me of that guy, I forgot his name, who basically said it because black people have smaller heads, thus we're less intelligent and we will score lower on the IQ test than any other race. Just because of the size of our heads, because we don't have contain big brains. Hmm. Which is just pushing another another stereotype, yeah, basically. And so, you know, scientifically speaking. That is so that has been so debunked. absolutely false. That's been so yes. debunked. But you make a good point. And that's one of the things that I bring up often when we talk about uh statistics, because you'll have the the usual suspects, the suspected white supremacists, you'll have those Correct. they'll be all like, Well, hold on, the statistics say that white IQ is what okay. The statistics say that, but the thing is that, like you bring up, is that unless you have uh, a decent sample size to be able to calculate them both. If you Correct. have a super large sample size of black people, there's going to be more black people that underperform. If you only have a few white people and the few white Selected people, white people. yeah, <laughs> it, 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 a good point. And they yeah. and they only have to take the test one time, and you give them the black people five different tests. You know what I'm saying? then your the foundation of your study is off it's fraudulent so they, they have these skewed studies i was going to say very quickly who created the test it's a, not, who created not a good it? question so i, I mean if, if me and you created a test for black folk i guarantee white folk won't do as well the, the basic arithmetic you know of English and things of that nature, but there could be some other elements to that that's cultural or that we just inherently know or, or we attain that information by being in our environment, thus compared to a test that they're giving us. Mm -hmm. So I, I always look at things through a microscope because it's always it seems as though it's always more than what it really is, especially in white supremacy. Yeah, you make a good point. So a lot of these statistics, and I'm glad you uh, were able to bring those things up. A lot of these statistics are very skewed against black people. Absolutely. And they're there to justify discrimination. They're there to justify discrimination. They're there to say, well, hold on. You can't say 
that we're not hiring black people or our percentage of black people is low because of racism. It's just because you, black people just tend not to be as qualified as white people. And then That's we true. have these statistics that they botched because of the studies that they made. And the statistics verify the fact that white people just tend to be better leaders or, or better in management or, you know what I'm saying? But it's based off of skewed data because the data came from a bias source. One of them think tanks, white supremacist think tanks. Yes. And another, I think another factor too, and a lot of times when I give statistics, I go to reputable sources like that statistic is from the uh, Harvard Business Review, a law school. And I usually do a lot of government websites because they're like, oh, that's a liberal source or that's a conservative or that's a all lies matter. You know, people always have excuses when you're giving statistics. So I tend to very strongly go to your Pew Research or Brookings Institutes, you know, Harvard, um, reputable places where people really can't argue the study because that's what people love to do. They like to argue statistics when you're pointing out blatant and clear racism and discriminatory mm. practices that once again deprive black people of the same opportunities that so-called affirmative action was supposed to survive, um, to mm. provide, as well as DEI, which when you look at the statistics unbiasedly, you notice that there was a lot of racism and discriminatory practices going on, even with those laws in place, and look who they benefited. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's a very good point. And this is why I feel like this was such a good video for us to make because this is so very similar mm -hmm. to us discussing affirmative action. We did, for the audience who might not have seen it, when the Supreme Court made their ruling on affirmative action last year, me and Brother Black Logic did a video on the actual statistics of affirmative action because the narrative is the fact that black people are getting into Ivy League colleges and black people are underqualified in comparison to the Asian students and the Asians are being overlooked despite their superior qualifications, they're being overlooked because affirmative action forces Ivy League colleges to accept black people. But when Absolutely. you look at the um, all of the factors, not just the cherry picked ones, all of the factors, you see that's not the case at all. It's not the case whatsoever. So this was um, a good video for us to make because like I said earlier, the DEI, the, the concept of DEI, I don't know if DEI is like a policy or if it's just like a an actual term that they use. I think it was policies that uh, businesses adopted because of the push of equality. Mm -hmm. So is it is it like an actual written policy or is it just a term for the inclusive policies? I know any business I work with, they had literally a DEI representative or a DEI person. I've even been to ones where they had DEI directors, where they had a whole DEI section. Okay. When I, used, right. I okay. used to work at uh, Capital One, Amazon. I used to work at a lot of uh, big businesses and they will literally have people who was in charge of DEI. Okay. All right. So really DEI is a, a sibling to affirmative action because when you break down the definitions is really the very similar definition. It's, it's, it's very similar. And if, if you don't mind, pop me this one uh, yeah, last okay. um, point up for me here because I, I pointed this out before. Civil rights or legal protections and guarantees of equal opportunities regardless of race, religion, or characteristics. What does it sound like? It sounds just like affirmative action, mm -hmm. and affirmative action sounds just like DEI. Yeah. We didn't get civil rights. We were still suppressed and oppressed. We didn't get affirmative action, and we sure are not receiving DEI that's been very significant for our benefit. So mm -hmm. when you look at these three things, we've been literally fighting and protesting for these particular things, having black lawyers to go up and, uh, uh, you know, to the court system and try to get these things implemented. And they're implemented, haven't benefited us at all because it's not targeted. Is it says minorities or disadvantaged groups or mono marginalized communities, et cetera? No, yeah, you're absolutely correct. And this is why 
I'm so glad culturally, I am so very glad culturally that we have divorced ourselves from certain terms such as black and brown, such as minority, such as even people of color, all of these things. because African-American. Good one, exactly. Because we have started to realize that these terms include other people and these terms are vague enough to include other people who should not qualify and who actually are um hindrance in the our progression because when we say people of color well jose he's a people of color and then mr Juan is a people of color and then you know what i'm saying and, and nikki haley is a people of color and vivek ramaswamy is a people of yep. color so and they have they're very different people with very different histories and very different agendas you know even when we use the term african american you uh -oh. know what i'm saying there's some people be all like well hold on now, now i'm a third generation jamaican so i'm i mean i am an american uh my dad was an american so i'm technically or or not a jamaican like a, a haitian for a, a better example I, why would i not be considered an african american elon musk a lot of people we're making the point that Elon Musk was an African-American. African -American. Absolutely. You know, I, I say this many a times when we're talking about the labeling, especially with the term African-American. Why is it that this is our nation? This is our country. Now, we may not have any reinforcements. We all we got. But nonetheless, why we don't uh, associate ourselves with that term is because neither does any other black group outside of Africa do. Jamaicans don't say I'm African Jamaica. Caribbeans don't say I'm African Caribbean. Uh, uh, Haitians don't say I'm African Haitian. They just say I'm Haitian. I'm Jamaican. I'm this and that. So why can't we say that we are foundational Black Americans? Why, why we can't say that? Like Africa is an entire continent. It's not one nation. It's, it's over 50 something countries. So for us to say I'm African, what, what country are you from? Then what tribe are you from? What region are you from? All these other questions. No, my family has been here from uh, since 1526 and prior. So with that being said, we are a different tribe outside of Africa, just as all these other groups. Mm -hmm. So again, we have a different culture, even though I keep hearing black Americans talking about, we don't have a culture. The only thing you have to do is know a little bit of your history. Learn about innovators and inventors and, and people who've been doctors and lawyers and built own towns. How about this, built a damn country. So yeah. yeah, that I don't even want going to rant, brother. I, that that kind of gets me yeah. a little bit. And to be in, so you know, audience, we actually did a video about like um somewhat speaking on this culture about the difference between us and our culture. And like our good brother asked the question, why should we not be able to identify with one? Now we we will go off on a whole nother sub. That's a whole nother subject. But Correct. the fact of the matter is, he makes a good point. This is our nation this is just as much our nation as jamaica is the nation of the jamaicans correct so we have to identify with uh like you said not a country a continent right as if you know we came from this continent how did we come from this continent when we built a country should correct by definition we should come from the country we built like that just makes sense that so, only makes sense there was there was no country before us and then when you look at these so-called African countries, they are shells of themselves. They are speaking like, I just found out when I went to Kenya, I just came back from Kenya recently. And I didn't know that Swahili was like a mixture of three languages. It's like Portuguese in there. Uh, there's some Arabic in there. There's some native African language in there. So I, I thought Swahili or key Swahili was this original language. So when you look at the regions, the landmass, of the different tribes. A lot of these are new tribes. They haven't been around like a thousand years. They've been around maybe 200 years or something like that. So trying to trace your roots back, yeah, you'll find out that most of us are from West Africa. But like for me, when I looked at my genealogy and my DNA, it was like, oh, you're part Nigerian, you're part Ghanaian, you're part Senegalese, you're part Ivory Coast. I'm a foundational black American. Yeah. Let's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I'm a foundational black American because all these other people that come over here, they know exactly who and what they are to a certain extent. Okay. To a mm -hmm. certain extent. Cause a lot of their history has been lost. We probably have 
more records of our own history than a lot of these other people do. Um, mm -hmm. That's why they come over here with like, you know, not knowing their original birthdays sometimes, the older group. But yeah, yeah, I told you, I get fried up about that because I've had people on a lot of my social media talking about, I hate myself or I hate my lineage because I'm not recognizing Africa by saying I'm not an African-American. I did a short and over in TikTok and pe people ate that up. I'm just like, I don't really respond to the trolls, but every now and again, just for, you know, shits and giggles. So. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's good engagement. It's good engagement, you know. <laughs> uh, I wanted to bring up this article, and I thought that this was very interesting because we have um, Florida's anti-black supervillain, none other than DeSantis. Ron DeSantis. Yeah, Ron, Ron DeSantis. DeSantis. That's, that's a better word for him, if I call him a him. But the NAACP urges students, which is really black students, urges student athletes to reconsider Florida colleges after state eliminates DEI. And if we know about DeSantis, DeSantis has had his notorious DeSantis's claim to fame is, quote unquote, anti-woke. That's his claim to fame, which is really and woke is another term, which is really a euphemism for black people. Is 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 really if the it by definition it's not supposed to the way they say well woke just means anything that's super progressive but they only use it basically when they're attacking black people so that's really his thing so let's Ron look into, yes oh go ahead brother I'm sorry let's look into this and let's see what we have here it says black student athletes see I said it was black. Black student athletes should can should reconsider attending public colleges and universities in Florida. The NAACP said in a letter to NA, NCAA president Charlie Baker on Monday. The letter was in response to the University of Florida and other state schools that have eliminated their diversity, equity and inclusion programs. It was also addressed to current and uh, pro prospective um, student athletes. So these are student athletes that are in football or basketball or are on their way to being in football or basketball. You know what's funny about this, though? I'm just laughing as you're reading because if the NAACP Coon Patrol mm -hmm. think that black athletes are going to stop going to Florida to play football, there'll be a fool. One... They're getting full scholarships. You're not going to tell me that I'm going to go to Colorado and pay to go to school where I have a full scholarship ride here. That's number mm -hmm. one. And DEI never helped black athletes to get into schools because they they want us. What, what, are you, what is he talking about? Mm -hmm. my, one of my things about the uh, NAACP, now that you bring this up, the NAACP is shameless because what are you all doing to solve this problem? If this is, if they are, if you're saying that Florida, under the supervision of DeSantis, if you're saying that Florida is able to eliminate DEI, which is pretty much opening the door for open discrimination, what is the NAACP with its history of being the longest standing, quote unquote, black activist organization? What are you all doing to counter that or to even supervise to make sure that the black students don't go to Florida because what are we supposed to do? Black students are just supposed to, well, don't go to Florida. Then it's going to be Texas. Then it's going to be um, Arizona. Then it's going to be this. And so we're just supposed to just go where we're accepted. No, you all, the NAACP, you all are supposed to be making sure that anywhere black people go, we're not discriminated against. I think the question for me, and I, I'll pose it to you. So is the the NAACP, are they trying to be segregationist or they're trying to do a silent protest? Or I, I don't know, because here's the thing. If you're doing a silent protest, I kind of understand it. Like, OK, we're going to hurt a uh, Florida school system by not having our black athletes to go there until they go back and change the policies for DEI. But then if, if I'm an educated Black student athlete, and I know about DEI really hasn't helped black people. So is that even worth it? I digress. But are they trying to segregate black folk from going to school in Florida? I mean, you can look at it 
both ways. Yeah, you can. And DEI is it, like, what are they going? The thing I is, just don't, I just if, don't if trust they the They're eliminating them, and if black students don't get accepted, then you couldn't re, you couldn't reconsider. It's not your is not your choice. If you accepted, you accepted. Absolutely. Why I'm would, not going to stop free school. Why would I turn it down? I'm not. I'm not going to stop anyone getting free schooling, especially especially the Foundation of Black America. I'm not going to stop them from getting free school. No way. No. I won't support that at all. Mm -hmm. And if anything, what the NAACP should be doing is they should be saying, "Black students, if you do go to these Florida schools because of their recent policy changes, if you face any discrimination, if you feel like you are being targeted, you let us know, and we will step in." And handle that. That's what the Absolutely. NAACP should be doing. Because this is basically saying tuck tail and run. You, you really, yeah, th that's what it is. That's what they're saying. They're saying, I mean, we're not going to do anything to solve the problem, but you know, um, here's a heads up so you don't get into trouble. That's what they're saying. Right. Because I can tell you, uh, you got Georgia right there. Uh, they can pull some brothers, some sisters down there to reinforce with some help with the NAACP, but we know that unfortunately our uh, civil rights organization has not been helpful for black Americans here in this country. They have not been really helpful. They've been helpful for other folk. The Urban League, they've been helpful for other folk, but not black folk. Yeah, that's true. Let's, we're right here, we're continuing. It says, quote, this is in a letter. It says, quote, this is not about po politics. This is not about politics, the letter read. It oh, is God. about the protection of our community, the progression of our culture, and most of all, it's about your education and your future. And what does the <laughs> NAACP do to advance Black education and Black future? It's so confusing because... DEI is poli is politics. It's political. Mm -hmm. it's, it's political. Yeah. So yeah. Right. So I mean, I don't even understand when they say it's not politics. Again, we understand that this is a coon ran nationwide organization, and unfortunately, they might have done some work back in the day. They might mm -hmm. have been a real organization to advance black people, but they are not that today. They're not the same group. They're yeah. not the same people. Yeah, they're not built like that. Absolutely not. I, I I agree. For some people who might have this thing of looking back in the past, the thing, what's the term I'm thinking about? Nostalgia. Okay. You got, some people have nostalgia for the NAACP, and there's so many different branches. One or two might be cool and might do some good work, but the collective of the NAACP has completely changed is it's faltered it, it's unhelpful it's unsuccessful it's it's just it's trash okay i'm trying to think about i'm trying to think about an organization uh today or back then excluding uh the black panther party not the new black panther party the black panther party and the black guerrilla army um Oh, or Black Liberation Army. I, I, outside of them, I don't really, and and it, and unfortunately, these organizations are gone. No, yeah. you see that NAACP, Urban League, uh, all I had a whole list of them. They're still here today, but none of the ones that was real that was really fighting for um, Black liberation. Uh, uh, opportunities for black folk they're not here today huh interesting no yeah. that's true that's a really good point uh finishing this off it says the letter was signed by naacp national board of director chairman leon w wilson and naacp president and ceo Derek jackson so, I mean, this goes all the way up to the top, okay? The CEO and the chairman all the way up to the top. It says, last year, Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill prohibiting the use of state funds for any DEI program. 
It's about the, the university. Money. You said what? I said it was about the money. Yep. The University of Florida responded in March by closing the office of the chief D diversity D officer, eliminating 13 full time DEI positions and 15 administrative appointments and ending DEI focused contracts with outside vendors. Other states, other state uh, school like North Florida. Oh, and OK, school, not other other state schools like North Florida and Florida International also have shut down DEI programs. And I think I mean, I just would want to know how does that benefit? I mean, oh, how did that hurt black folk? That's all I really would want to know. Yeah, I want I really want to know the percentage. Now, I'm pretty sure inside the DEI office, they always got to have black folk because they're making it a black thing. Mm -hmm. But outside of them. By them stopping DEI in Florida, how much has that hurt black folk? Do we see an increase in unemployment or do we see the same number of unemployment? You, you see what I'm saying? I want to see the actual impact. Mm -hmm. That's true. And to be very honest, I want to say this. If they are firing people, I want to see who exactly is being fired under DEI. I think that's a good question, too, because if we already ex explained, DEI is not supposed to exclusively be about black people. So if you're leave, if you're going to shut down DEI programs, that means you should be firing Asians as well or Hispanics. You should be firing folks from the LGBT community. You should be firing women, white women. So let's let's look and see exactly who is being targeted under the restrictions of DEI. I think that's another good question. What about this? You just made me think about something. You was going down a list of people who they'd be firing. Now, the Afghani so-called refugees when they mm. came over, as well as we have some Afghani ones, and there was another group outside. We had Ukrainians to come over. Now, with the exception of the Ukrainian, but we look at the Afghanis, we look at, I did a, uh, on one of my other broadcasts, um, Afro, I talked about how Joe Biden, um, you know, people say secretly, but it's a public program, but they flew over 320,000 migrants mm -hmm. into America illegally under this program, right? It has all these stipulations, but here's my point. Afghanis are considered what? To America. Uh, well, immigrants, or you mean racially? Well, yeah, I mean, but you said immigrants, would they would they fall into a minority group? Yeah. Okay. They would fall but racially, them. what does America label Afghanis? Racially, they would be labeled as white. Correct. According to the Census Bureau, people from North Africa and the Middle East and Europe are considered white. Mm -hmm. so they can essentially kill two birds with one stone and say okay these guys are fired where you guys from again okay yeah yeah you good you're white soft mm -hmm. that's true because if anybody say well didn't you hire didn't you fire all the you know the hispanics or black folk right and they're like well no we still have minorities we have afghanis and at the same time they're considered white in america so are they that minority mm -hmm. i'm just saying i i try to Think about the way how they will think about it and how they get away with a lot of racism, right? Always, when they talk about black folk, you always hear two more people. You hear the black and brown, and you also hear Native Americans. Yeah. But when they talk about Native Americans, they never bring up black folk. When they talk about Hispanic folk, they never bring up black folk. Never. Mm. That's That you make a great point. You make an in incredibly great point. Also, um, I'm going to finish this off. There's not really much left. Okay. Because we still have more information to cover. It says, quote, and this is still the letter that they're sending to the black students, the black student athletes. It says, quote, while it is our duty to spread awareness and encourage action around these egregious assaults, we also recognize that protests can come at a price, the letter read. The sad reality is, for many black student athletes, congregate um, congregate sport may be their sole opportunity 
at achieving the upward mobility necessary to propel them into their rightful place in society, places in society. It's unclear how awareness of the debate over DEI might affect current or prospect students, pers uh, prospective student athletes who are considering powerhouses like Florida and Florida State, especially at a time when name, image, and likeness deals have become so uh, integral to building rosters, to building rosters, but a growing campaign could hinder those schools' recruiting efforts, okay? Hmm. So, and that's another topic. A lot of the students now, that's been a very big conversation. A lot of the student athletes on the um, in college are getting paid for their likeness because a lot of the schools, the universities. Oh, yeah, three and nine L. Yeah. So that's another aspect to the conversation as well. But that's not really what the topic is. So that 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 might be a whole nother uh video, to be honest. Because that it, it, it kind of goes into a whole nother subject, and that's something that can be discussed. Right. It says, um, floor it says what am I about to Florida great and pro football Hall of Famer Emmett Smith asked minority athletes, see minority, not saying black, minority athletes at his um Alma Mater to Alma Mater. Alma yeah. Mater. Alma Mater. Yeah. Oh, that's two. Okay, that's two. That's one word together, right? Right. Okay. It says, quote, be aware and vocal about the decision. Johnson, and they're talking about the CEO of the NAACP, Johnson took it a step further Monday, quote, Florida's rampant anti-Black policies are a direct threat to the advancement of our young people and their ability to compete in a global economy. Johnson said in a statement, diversity, equity, and inclusion are uh, paramount to ensuring equitable and effective educational outcomes. Quote, the value black and other college athletes bring to large universities is unmatched. If these institutions are unable to completely invest in those athletes, it's time they take their talents elsewhere. Um, and that's the end of that. Yeah. Can you go back really quickly? Okay. To this part? Yeah, because now, now, first, I don't know why Emmett Smith is speaking up for everybody, but what they're doing here is they just stated that these are anti-black policies. How? How these are anti-black policies. And the only reason why I say that is because if we know statistically that DEI hasn't truly benefited black Americans, and then that DEI includes everybody except white men, then how is it anti-black policy? But mm -hmm. see, I always feel like we're being the sacrificial lamb to make it a black issue. Then what happens? Black folk get out on the street, protesting, saying things online, making videos. And DEI is just not about us. And matter of mm -hmm. fact, we it hasn't helped us. It helped more Asians and Hispanics than it ever helped black. But we'll be the sacrificial lambs mm -hmm. to go run with, you know, with the wand. Mm -hmm. trying to get things changed. And when things get changed, it get changed for other groups constantly over and over again. And you make, you make a very, very good point because there's like the um, anti-black, anti-black, uh, black. it's anti like even when they talk about, and I, I can get this off to me, even when they talk about voting rights, and then we all like, hold on now. Well, black people, you guys already, you know the history of the voting rights. You all I have to understand this. So they get black people to be on the front lines for something that, ultimately is going to propel and have another group of people leapfrog above us so that's really what there is with dei because if you can't provide any data and statistics that dei mainly or primarily benefits black people or puts black people ahead everybody else is actually leapfrogged ahead of black people the same way affirmative action was which is why when affirmative action was ruled down when they when they uh the Supreme Court made their ruling on affirmative action. You saw black people like, oh, I mean, it's it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And they didn't it, it makes that. it may it makes me think about going back to your point 
about voting rights. And somehow they have convinced black folk that we're still need to fight for voting rights. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is a ploy and someone may state that this is conjecture and I'm stretching that if we don't have voter ID laws, this mm -hmm. has nothing about being conservative or liberal or progressive or moderate. It doesn't because think about everything you do, Afro, you need a freaking ID. Yeah. But you're telling me the most powerful country in the world and it's already been proven in the last three months we had a, one million illegal immigrants inside the country. So you tell me the most powerful country in the world doesn't require you, um, doesn't require identification when you're voting for the most powerful position in the world. So if we're fighting for voting rights to eliminate or to ban voter ID laws where Tom Dick O'Hurry or Jerome Durek and, 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 and Mike or Hector Gomez, <laughs> you know, can just go up there and vote, then that's democracy as we know it. Since mm -hmm. Charlemagne won't call out things like that, that's democracy as we know it. Yeah. And anybody can vote. Anybody. You don't need an ID. What's your name? Oh, okay, cool. Go ahead. Who are you voting for? I'm going to vote for Joe Biden. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. It's a good accent, by the way. It's a good accent. But you make a you you make a really good point because let's 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 think about this because this it, it all ties in, family. It all ties in. Let's think about this. The black people have been voting, in, uh, unfortunately, for the Democrats for generations. All right. Good point. Black people have been voting for generations only recently because of the surge in illegal immigration that we've been seeing over the last few is it's been a little more than just biden but over the last few years or so only recently have we been seeing oh hold on we need more voting rights because the ids are a problem so you mean when bill clinton was running ids were a problem when when bush was running ids weren't a problem when obama was running both times ids weren't a problem for the black community now all of a sudden now IDs are a problem for the black community when all of the all of these times and then all of the voting, the midterms in between IDs have never, ever, ever been a problem. That's never been a problem. Now, all of a sudden, IDs are a problem for the black community. No, that that's just not true. It doesn't add up. It doesn't. They were saying that a lot of elderly black folk didn't have IDs. And I'm like, no, that's a lie. They have ID. It may be expired, but they have ID. Mm -hmm. you, you get what I'm saying? So I, I don't really like the whole voting rights to stop it. We, I, I, I voted in Texas and I had no issues. I voted in DC where I'm originally from, had no issues. I never had issues voting. Mm -hmm. So no one has stopped. Uh, you're black. So what we're going to do here is want to stop you right here. Um, let's we'll see your ID. All right. All right, go in there and vote then. Like, never. Like, yeah. I think they're just trying to... I, I don't... I don't. Whether it be liberals or conservatives, man, they, they always have an angle about the way they want to have and control the power that we will give them, whether it be consciously or subconsciously. Yeah. That's very true. Now you have some spe statistics. Speaking of like the um, Hispanics and all that stuff, you have some more oh, yeah. information about the DEI. Let me pop that up for you very quickly then. There you go. All right. There we go. Yeah, it states here, and this is from the Harvard Business Review again, the proportion of managers at U.S. commercial banks who were expanding rose from 4.7 to 5.7 between 2003 and 2014, while white women and uh, black men dropped, um, you know, white women 39 to 35 and black men 2.5 to 2.3. It goes on to say that the bottom black men in management increased just slightly from 3% to 3.3 from 85 to 2014, but white women outnumbered them, of course, by um, 4%. 4%. So the big swings here you see in the discrepancy is that when you correlate 
the number of illegal immigrants, let's state back from even Obama. He had a lot of illegal immigrants, but he also deported the most people. A lot of people don't know that either. Um, but between that time, we've had millions and millions of immigrants inside the country, whether it be legal or illegal. And a lot of them have been Hispanic. Mm -hmm. And during that time frame, black men have been losing jobs while they had a whole uh, percent increase, or some people may look at a 10%, but 1% increase. And those numbers are very significant when you're dealing with the number, uh, number of population and demographics they have in the country versus us. We're talking about point. Point one, uh, point two percent from two point five to two three percent versus they went up an entire percent, and that could be largely depending on uh, the group of people we're talking about. But yeah, the the numbers don't lie when you correlate DEI, uh, immigrants inside the country of a Hispanic nature, illegally or legal, and how they essentially decrease the number of Black folk that have been working in those same fields. Mm. So all of this stuff is a political agenda. All of this from start to finish. It has to be. And the immigrants, when we say that the immigration problem is going to be the erasure of foundational Black Americans, this is exactly what we're talking about. This is what we mean when we say this. This is what the data is showing us. We're not making this up. This isn't a rumor. This isn't even conjecture. This is what the data, we're looking at the data. This is what the data is showing us. And another thing is, illegal immigration has been a problem much longer than what we have been really giving it notice and coverage. It's been a problem for a very long time. Mm -hmm. When you look at the amount of immigrants that's coming inside the country now. For a long time, everybody was like, oh, Mexican, 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 Mexican. It's 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 all those countries, right? It's all of the Central American countries, Colombia, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Ecuador. Even they even have they stated in how Brazilians are coming up as well. Mm. And not only that, you have Haitians, right? Then um, I think it was a maybe a couple of videos ago I was talking about they had 24,000 Chinese illegal immigrants come through southern of the border through Mexico in like three or four months. 24,000 Chinese. And prior to that, they was having large Indians to come over to America illegally. And when you look at the Asian community as a whole, what jobs do you think they're going to get? Uh, they're going to be in those uh, customer support tech techie jobs and stuff like that. They're going to be in tech and they're going to be in there uh, building their own businesses. And somehow coming through illegally, they're going to still be placed in front of foundational black Americans because we see all the support that Hispanics are getting. We see all the support um, that the Asians that are coming. And we're talking about illegals here, right? We're talking about undocumented how they come inside the country illegally and they're receiving benefits over us. And, and, and unfortunately it had to take large caravans and them being dropped off in black communities for black folk to really wake up about a lot of things. Cause people that we've never heard speak a certain language are now speaking black empowerment. Mm, it yeah. had to take thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in the country illegally and being dropped off and the resources in those in those black neighborhoods being taken away from them to house people who don't even supposed to be here. Boy, yeah. we got to wake up sooner. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. So this is why it's so very important for us to cover information like this. Because all of this stuff ties in. We'll talk about illegal immigration and then we'll talk about DEI, but a lot of people, and I'm glad that we are able to be here and do this, a lot of people are not making the connections that they are intertwined with each other. Because a lot of these Hispanics, especially the ones that they will be promoting, like for instance, DeSantis is a Hispanic name. Good point. DeSantis is a Hispanic name and you see the anti-blackness in them. So they will choose DeSantis Zimmerman. Zimmerman was in Florida too. 
let, let's we, we have to remember these facts mm -hmm. so they'll cherry pick the most anti-black hispanics possible and they'll put them in the best roles the best position they'll assign them the best positions and the best roles and all of that and then they'll use a lot of the other ones as cheap labor and stuff like that the the darker skin ones they'll of use course. them on their farms as cheap labor and stuff and that's already been exposed so and they'll do this because this is how they can get their their workforce and they can supplement FBA workforce. Absolutely. So it's it's a very nefarious plan. It's very nefarious. With it's DEI, well they can they can now they can just openly discriminate against black people. Like, oh no, that's a DEI position, and we don't do that over here anymore. Anything dealing with devastation and being devious is well thought out when it comes to white supremacy don't don't think there are no fools or stupid there some plans that they have are well thought out and we have to really analyze and break down things and catch it because if we don't we're more of us who are uninformed will be hurt yeah if we don't yes yes you're absolutely correct but i i think we did a great thing about this and there's so many as we were discussing this it's so many different subjects i actually want to maybe do some another one sooner about the student athletes because i don't know if that's really a conversation that a lot of people have really touched up on uh, as much as it needs to because really the student athletes the way the system is working that the millions of dollars that are being made off their likeness off their performance off of all of that the jersey they say all of that the school and university in the state even gets off of that money they're starting to get a small percentage of that and uh i think that that's something that we can dive into definitely that would be, be a good topic yeah so um in case you guys didn't know this is our brother black logic black logic do you have any uh conclude concluding statements about this subject you know brother i think we did a really in-depth job especially breaking down the analytics of things and giving definitions i have no more to add okay well where can people find you oh they can find me on my youtube channel black logic as well as uh TikTok, facebook um instagram and twitter at black zero and that's black pretty zero. much it yeah. All right. Thank you very much. And the links to that will be in the description below. So you guys can just click on that and follow him on his social media. Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. No problem. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. And you, we will be seeing our good brother, Black Logic, again. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, brothers and sisters, this was a very informative, like, and that's why I knew we had to get our brother, Black Logic, on here. Because this was a very informative subject that we had, we absolutely had to discuss because this is something that they're talking about. This is an underlying plan that they're they're going about. So we had to expose it, we had to bring light to it, we had to inform the people of it. So shout out to Black Logic so we can really break this down from different angles and different perspectives. All right. So Make sure that you all follow me on my social media pages, which is Afro Elite on Instagram and then the Afro Elite on Twitter. And the links to that, or X, whatever y'all call it, and the links to that are in the description below. Please also make sure that you guys hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future content. All right. Um, and with that being said, my brothers and my sisters, be one salute to every single last one of you all. And of course, as always, you all have a good one.